Welcome to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. I'm just thrilled, absolutely delighted to have you with us today. I was praying for our time together and God dropped a verse in my heart to minister to you. And it's John 14, verse 27. It says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be fearful. I want to encourage you today that if you have fear, anxiety, stress, and pressure, that God has a, the antidote for that, and it's His peace. So I encourage you to give Him your stress, your fear, your anxiety, and exchange that for His peace. And of course, we would love to pray for you. So hop on the phone. If there's any need in your life, we consider it an honor to get to pray for you. If you can't get to the phone, then you can leave a prayer request on our website. And we love getting to pray with you. It's a tremendous pri privilege and pleasure for us. And mom, I'm so excited. We have a great guest with us we today. Do. We do. And we've had you before. <laughs> yeah. And we love having Dr. Well, Gary thank Smalley. You. Thank you. And, and, and let me just say how much I love being with you too. This is awesome. You have such a great hearts of uh, love mm. and genuineness. It just like oozes <laughs> out of your uh, facial expressions and your body language. So I love being here. Thank nice. you. Thank yeah. you. And we love having you. Yeah. And you have a special message because there are people watching mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. who have tremendous marital problems, family mm -hmm. problems, critical crises. And what affects us more than our family? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. So this is a special program for you. Mm -hmm. And you can, of course, feel free to call in. And we don't counsel, but we'd love to take your name, your family, and pray over them or get on our website. Now, Sarah... Uh, this book is a very special book. It's amazing. I believe you'll be shocked at this book. It's called Four Days to a Forever Marriage. <laughs> you know, we all like quick fixes. <laughs> and you think, mm -hmm. are you serious? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're really, really serious. And our guest today gives you serious answers. Mm. Share, Sarah. Well, I want to ask you, Gary, uh, how long have you been married? 47 years. That's almost forever. <laughs> That's right. It feels like forever, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, in this book, I mean, in our society today, marriages mm -hmm. seem almost disposable. Right. And people don't even get married. Right. I mean, they're like, hey, you know, it's kind of an outdated concept. Exactly. Can mm -hmm. you speak to some of that and some concerns yeah, about I that? I can say that um, uh, God connected me to Norma, my wife, and we are exactly the opposite personality. Uh, we took a test about 15 years ago, and the psychologist who tested it said, first of all, your personalities are so opposite, and, and they're like a polar magnet thing, that you should never have made it to the altar. <laughs> and and sure. then secondly, you could never work together. It's impossible. <laughs> We've worked together for 40 years, wow. and in the same office, she's the office manager, I'm supposed to be the president and CEO thing. And so it's confusing a lot of times because she is so consistent that she doesn't like change. And I, I get energy from change. She gets energy from uh, consistency and a plan that works and you don't change the plan. Yeah. And we're just the opposite. So what I do drains her energy. What she does drains my energy. So that it's only the grace of God and the mercy of God that we made it. But in this book, Four Days to a Forever Marriage, we have learned that by honoring each other every day, by treasuring each other, by putting high value on each other, that she's valuable, I'm valuable, and, and, uh, and keeping our anger low, mm. that's sustained us. Because mm. the lower our anger is for our mate, mm. and the higher the honor is, you actually have affectionate feelings for a person. But whatever a person treasures, Jesus said, mm. um, that's where your affections are. That's where your heart is. Mm. So I want to keep my heart alive to her. She wants to keep it alive to me. Mm. So we forgive each other every day mm. because there isn't a day that goes by that we don't irritate each other or frustrate each other or discourage each other and drain our energy. But we forgive each other. We talk about it. Next morning, we're going at it again, just loving life and, and each other. Yeah. And now, so, yeah. Tell me, how do you honor your wife? I mean, I, yeah. I know there are people watching here today right. that say, well, how do you honor a mate? Because right. we haven't yeah. really been taught that. I know, and I, I just uh, trial and error. Uh, I don't even know who 
really, uh, one of the godly pediatricians taught me some of it when my kids were really young because they, they wanted the kids to honor. The, the first promise in the Bible is honor your mother and father so you'll be healthy and live longer and extend the years of your life and so on and so forth. And so my kids understood that it was very, really important for them to honor me. And so what we've done is we've learned how to make a list. I have, a, I have at least 10 pages uh, typed on my computer that I've saved in a document file. And so I review that from time to time, but it's all the things I love about Norma. It's all the things I appreciate. It's all the great memories we've had together for 47 years. It's all the positive things. It's nothing negative. And so, because negative stuff comes to my mind, you know, every day, why don't you change this? And why don't you change that? And so anyway, the, the essence of this book is that we show you what to do for four days and we show you that it's very important for you to do it with enthusiasm and uh, emotion and excitement because the more emotion you put into to thinking correctly the way God wants us to think, the faster the changes come. Mm-hmm. But, but in four days, if you make a list of all the positive things about your mate, there's really simple things like, for example, John Gottman, one of the world's experts in marriage from, from the University of Washington, He says, if you as a couple buy expensive household appliances together, that's one of the keys to staying married for 50 years. You're kidding me. Wow. There's like a whole list of those kinds of things. You're kidding. I mentioned some of them. We just bought a dishwasher. Yeah, you did. Was it a really high quality? (laughs) For us, yeah. Okay, there you are. (laughs) The higher, the better. Because see, a quality product that you buy together is valuable, honorable. And so there's something about that, but also reminiscing, for example, together as a couple about the great experiences in the past brings affection. Hmm. Laughing together for 10 minutes uh, brings oxytocin to your brain, the love chemical. And after you laugh together for 10 minutes, you want to hug and cuddle. But see, the average person doesn't know that. And so 10 minutes, you know, if you stare at your mate for one to two minutes, stare right at them in their eyes and make a noise, some kind of noise, the noise and the staring starts coating your brain with oxytocin. And that's a major factor. Every day you have to have about one to two minutes of staring at each other and just admiring the person and thinking of the admirable things. And those are really simple things. But there's a whole huge list of those deals. Wow. Yeah. Can you give us an example in your own marriage? Yeah, of honoring? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the main thing is the list. The second thing is that I, I praise her every day. Because when you, when you praise your mate, it activates the love chemicals in us, first of all. It causes your mate to think of honoring thoughts about herself or his self. It causes you to think honorable thoughts about your mate. Most people want to be praised. They don't want to give it. Hmm. But if you give it, it raises the value in your mind of, of your spouse so that, so that there's not a day that goes by that we don't honor each other by expressing praise. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask a question in just a second, but some of our viewers, you're struggling in your marriage. You know, we want to pray for you. Mm-hmm. You're having a hard time in your marriage. Some of you watching, you would like to be married. We want to pray for you as well. So get on the phone or get on the website. But we want to pray for your marriages because marriage is a biblical institution. Exactly. I mean, ground zero, Adam and right. Eve. It doesn't right. get more and you're healthier, fundamental than that. You're wealthier. Yeah. There's yeah. all kinds of great positive things. Totally. And people who live together, yeah, they, can't, they don't make it. Yeah. 80% of them don't make it. And if they live together and try to marry after that, 80% of them don't make it. Wow. Yeah, so that's very foolish to live together first because the average single thinks, because they don't know the scriptures. Sure. They don't know right, the truths of right, God. Right. And they think, that oh, this is a good idea. Let's just live together. Hmm. No, it's not wow. a good idea because the anger level goes up huge when they marry. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it goes up you know, when they're not married because they, sure. they get disgusted with each other because the higher the anger, the more dis- detestable Right. the other person is. Right. So you got to get rid of your anger every day. Right. So that's another thing that I talk that you about. you bring out there. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you, you talk about praising Norma, uh, your right. wife. Yeah. When you say praising her, what does that yeah. mean? Because that, that means that's like, a little... Um, Give like, an example okay, of what you say okay, to her. For, 
I love the way she has her hair fixed by this professional. And, uh, and so at least once a day or twice a day, I'll say, gosh, I just love the way, like both of your hair is perfect. And uh, so, but I love the way the, the, guy, the guy did it and comes down here and now you, she has to keep it up for like a week. And so, in other words, I praise her hair. I praise uh, anything I can think about her, uh, the way she dresses, the way you like, look at the way you're dressed, just classy. In fact, you're dressing honorably mm. for your audience. Right. You look honorably mm. for your because you honor them. Right. And and so and I got a you know bright yeah. green nice. you know yeah. and so I could have come here with a sloppy stuff and no, didn't you know I don't have much hair. My wife says to me, "Are you going to get your one hair cut? You know this week <laughs> or whatever." But anyway, so. We just are so aware that honor is so important in a relationship because what you honor, you have affection towards. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody is having a problem with their mate today. Mm -hmm. They're angry with them. Mm -hmm. It's so hard for them to do anything positive. Mm -hmm. But you do it out of obedience to God's word. You don't do it because you feel it. Because mm -hmm. your feelings yeah. are what follow your thinking. Yeah. So what, you can think differently today. You'll have a different feeling tomorrow. Sure. You think properly for four days. Mm. Force yourself to do it, no matter whether you feel it or not. Watch what happens to your emotions in four days. Yeah. You know, we're going to come back in just a little okay, minute good. here. But one of the things I want to ask you about uh, is how does Norma honor you? Yes. So we're going to come back and yes. I'm going to ask you that question because yes. our society today, mm -hmm. women generally don't honor men. No. Right. And we don't honor our spouse as well. Exactly. And the Holy Spirit dealt with me yes. on that okay. hardcore, good. hardcore about five years yeah, ago. Okay, I broke down crying in front of my That's hairstylist. Good. So oh, you don't yeah. want to miss this next little part. We're going to come back and talk to you about honoring your mate. That's good. Every day a married man or woman must make a choice, choosing love or anger. And it isn't as easy as it sounds. Four Days to a Forever Marriage by Dr. Gary and Norma Smalley can help you begin living a more intimate and loving relationship that honors God and each other. You will learn about the following. The power of loving words and actions. Better communication and resolving anger. Connections through affection and intimacy. Finding treasures in the trials. Invest a little time over just four days to help get your relationship in balance and start reaping emotional and spiritual benefits. We'll also send you Marilyn's three CD teaching set, God is for You. Marilyn tackles the topic every believer struggles with, finishing well what you started. She'll also encourage you to run the race God has called you to with endurance. We'll send you both resources with your gift of $30 or more today. Call or click to receive this great offer. Dr. Gary Smalley and, and talking about marriage. And I love your book, this new book, Four Days to a Forever Marriage. It's only 100 marriage. pages. Sweet. So it's a gift book, but what did they pack this stuff in? What they did, a New Leaf publisher, mm -hmm. they just interviewed Norma and I after 47 years of marriage. Mm -hmm. And they put it to organize it and put it nice. together in four days. And Nice. Yeah, I think they did a great job. And very, very friendly, user-friendly, yeah, no, relevant. It's a very impressed. powerful book. I didn't expect anything like it. You know, uh, before we took a pause for a yeah. second, we mm -hmm. talked about women honoring yes. men. Right. And uh, I'm going to ask you a question on how does Norma honor you. Mm -hmm. But, Mom, I wanted to check with you as well. And the reason I'm asking is, you know, I'm early in my marriage, relatively. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm interested to know, as far as women honoring men mm -hmm. and a wife honoring mm -hmm. a husband, 
-hmm. how to do that in practical terms mm -hmm. um, because I don't see it illustrated in sure. our world well at all. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like our world sure. dishonors men, dishonors yes, husbands, exactly. dishonors right, fathers, right, right. and I don't see any good fruit from that. Right. So talk me through some practical things. Yeah. Well, I had yeah. an example one time mm -hmm. with my husband, mm -hmm. and you know, he always uh, wanted me to do things for God. I mean, right. he was never, right. uh, I don't want you mm -hmm. teaching, I don't want you ministering. Mm -hmm. He was always push, push, push. Mm -hmm. But if I'd speak, mm -hmm. he would always tell me everything wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, mm -hmm. you know, well, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have said that, and that was too long, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and you should have made a better and application. You're hard on the people. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're hard on the people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so he would say these uh -huh. things to me. Uh -huh. So one day I was just so upset about it, mm -hmm. and I went to the Lord. Okay. I said, Lord, you know, he just hurts me. Mm -hmm, he, mm -hmm. he encourages me to speak, but then he just takes me apart. Exactly. And the Lord said to me, well, what do you say to him about his sermons? Mm. Well, I said, I tell him what's wrong with them <laughs> and if they're too long. And the Lord said to me, and what mm. you're sowing mm -hmm. is what you're reaping. Oh, that's good. Mm. And so I start sowing different things. Mm. And I'm telling you, my wow. reaping was almost overwhelming. So please tell about very, very Norma good. honoring you. Well, the way she honors me in a lot of ways. Uh, she serves my dreams. I'm the, I'm the dreamer. She's the dream maker. Mm. And she's very creative. And so she'll come to me regularly and say, hey, I got an idea about this and that. And I always feel really honored by that. She praises me. Mm. Uh, she's also very critical at times. Or I, I don't call it criticism as much as I, I, I call it. She's very observant that we, what could help me improve. Mm. Like she doesn't like me. Uh, like, for example, when we eat together. If I'm eating a salad, I'm not even aware of it, but I'm like a, I stab the salad, you know, to get mm -hmm. the lettuce on the fork, you know, and stuff. And so she'll, she'll go, <clears throat> you know, and, or she'll say it if we're alone. And, and so, uh, because I mean, I realize, you know, she's always trying to protect me, uh, and protect my reputation and things like that. But, but, but the thing I enjoy more is praise. So when she's praising me, I really love that. She also... Like, for example, I spoke in your church yesterday. So she knew I'd be tired at noon. Mm. So she said, where do you want to eat? And so when she asks me, because she might have wanted to eat someplace else, but she she's defers many times mm. and, and consciously. I want him to, I want, I want, let's go where, she'll say to herself, let's go to where you want to go. But mm. she doesn't say it out loud. But she's real uh, accommodating. And so I feel honored mm. when she does that. But, but there's so many things that, come to my mind no one ever asks me that uh and so but there's lots of things that she does that honors me and there's things she does that irritate me mm -hmm. which is a good thing too sure i need to emphasize that because sure. when your mate irritates you that's the logs in our own eye mm. that's being revealed through their behavior yeah. i used to go after her for that oh and it's a big part of this book right. is don't try to change your mate let me say this right to you stop trying to change your mate. Because even if you could change them, which it's impossible to do, uh, you're not gonna be any happier. You're as happy as the beliefs in your own heart mm -hmm. from God's word. Mm -hmm. We control mm -hmm. with our relationship with God, mm -hmm. Christ and the Holy Spirit, and his word being hidden in our heart, mm -hmm. we control the quality of our life. Yeah. And I only learned that about 50, uh, 10 years ago. Because I tried to change her for 37 years of our marriage. Never wow. worked. And my son's the researcher who, f who figured out that if you try to change your mate, incidentally, can I say this? Do I have time to say sure. the essence of a marriage? Sure. The essence of any thriving, successful marriage is safety. Mm. It's the highest form of honor. Because safety communicates to your mate that they can say whatever they want and you're not going to go after them. Mm. You're not going to criticize them. You're going to hold the information to get them later. You're not going to try to change them. You're not critical. You are a great listener. Mm -hmm. and, and when you start to argue about something, and everybody, all couples argue because they're two different people with their own opinions, which is the best thing mm -hmm. because in this book I show you three ways to argue and honor where you come out with a win-win solution where you both feel nice. like you're one. Mm -hmm. and, and it can be done in five minutes and it can be done in a, in a month. Mm. You know, it just depends on how serious the thing is. But, but when, a, when a man 
build safety in a relationship, and a wife does, and then you disagree during the day about your opinions, you can lovingly, honoringly uh, negotiate. Can I say that? Sure. How do you do it? Oh, yeah. sure. Okay. You listen to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, James 1, 19 mm-hmm. and 20. Mm-hmm. You listen to understand mm-hmm. carefully, and then you don't talk about what, uh, you don't try to change them. You mm-hmm. just listen. And, and then you're going to be slow to anger because mm-hmm. anger never works the righteousness of God. Right. So the second thing you do is you massively and, and energetically try to understand. Mm-hmm. You really want to understand. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as you listen and you understand and each other, and then you both throw out options of what the solutions to this problem is. Mm. So you're free. When you, when you were the safe mate, you could throw any option you want, the wilder, the better, funnier, Goofier, yep. because goofy suggestions sometimes spark the That's real exactly one. Right. But if you feel safe, right. my wife and I always, we've never had an exception, we always come to a win-win where I feel like, that, I can live with that, that's good. And then she says, I can live with that too. Yeah. And so then we live with it, and if it doesn't work out a month from there, we thought it would, right. then we go right back to listening, to understand, to win-win, and it works every time. We've never had the exception. That's awesome. Sarah, people are watching this yep. and feeling overwhelmed. Yes. <laughs> and feeling their need, yep. you know, for help in their marriage. And I'm telling you, we don't want short-term marriages. Mm-hmm. We want long marriages. Amen. We want the blessing to come on our children and our grandchildren mm-hmm. of long-term marriages. Mm-hmm. And that's why I so encourage you, get, get to the phone. Mm-hmm. Call us. Give us the name of your family. And, you know, we don't counsel you, but we love to pray for you. And I'm sure Gary Smalley would tell you prayer, and Mm -hmm. Norma, too, has brought them through again and again Mm -hmm. and again Mm -hmm. and again. Mm -hmm. And your problem isn't too big for God. Mm -hmm. Come on. So call us or get on our website. It's really good. And there are so many great principles, but they're not hard principles. Yeah. I mean, there's mm-hmm. some of them are fairly common sense. They're on the sixth grade level because mm-hmm. everything I write's on the sixth grade level. Yeah. So yeah, and if you had to say one thing that you think, man, that would kind of be the, encapsulate the whole whole deal. Mm-hmm. What would you say would be one thing possibly that mm-hmm. maybe could encapsulate all of it? High honor every day, mm-hmm. low anger every day, mm-hmm. and listen. Mm-hmm. You listen to your mate because they're very valuable. Mm. And when you say something that offends them or you do something that offends them, you say, whoa, 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 you're way too valuable to treat this way. Yeah. I'm so sorry that I said that or did that. Yeah. Whoa, please forgive me. Yeah. You know, because they can tell if it's, especially a woman. Sure. A woman can tell if you're genuine right. or just faking it, you know, to get something later or whatever. So yeah. anyway, high honor, which mm-hmm. means value your mate. Mm. Uh, treasure them. And those are decisions and thoughts you have all day long. Mm-hmm. And, or you can have thoughts of anger, which mm-hmm. is ruining your relationship. Mm-hmm. Man, that's powerful. Super, super powerful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you're you. Thank you. More than welcome. Yeah. You're awesome. And yeah, well, I, you know what? I love you yeah. make it so practical yeah. where we really live. Well, I have to do that for myself. And, and I've made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah. you know, God says the marriage bed is undefiled. Exactly. So when people just go out and live with each exactly. other, they have a defiled bed. Absolutely. And they wonder, well, what's wrong with my sex exactly. life? Exactly. So to have a good marriage right. is to have a good sex life. A woman cannot, it's impossible for her to have a good sex life if she's angry. Hmm. So a husband has to be seeking forgiveness almost every day. Is that not That's true? That's awesome. That's totally I mean, true. Are, are men <laughs> not? Totally true. Very emotional. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. I know God has good things for you. Every day, a married man or woman must make a choice, choosing love or anger. And it isn't as easy as it sounds. Four Days to a Forever Marriage by Dr. Gary and Norma Smalley can help you begin living a more intimate and loving relationship that honors God and each other. You will learn about the following. The power of loving words and actions. Better communication and resolving anger. Connections through affection and intimacy. Finding treasures in the trials. Invest a little time over just four days to help get your relationship in balance and start reaping emotional and spiritual benefits. 
We'll also send you Maryland's three CD teaching set, God is for You. Maryland tackles the topic every believer struggles with, finishing well what you started. She'll also encourage you to run the race God has called you to with endurance. We'll send you both resources with your gift of $30 or more today. Call or click to receive this great offer. I'm very happy. I want to encourage you and share with you specifically if you're struggling with being uh, unemployed. You know, in America, around the world, many people are struggling with this issue of unemployment. And as I was praying about this, I felt like God led me to 1 Samuel chapter 9. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, Saul had been assigned by his dad to go and find some donkeys. And Saul looked, he was diligent, he took a servant with him, looked, for like three days and went to all different kinds of places, couldn't find the donkeys, couldn't find the donkeys, couldn't find the donkeys. And some of you watching right now, that's how you feel. You say, I've been looking, I've been looking, I've been knocking on doors, I've been sending resumes, I've been filling out applications, I'm looking and I'm just not landing this job. I'm not getting any open doors. I'm not finding the job that I need. And God wants to encourage you today that He has the right provision at the right time. And sometimes the, the path that He takes us on requires us to trust Him, that we can, He can be our provider, and that we can trust that He will lead and guide and direct our steps. Because at the end of this search for these donkeys, Saul never found the donkeys, but he ran into Samuel, and Samuel anointed him to be the king. You ought to read this in 1 Samuel chapter 9. It's just really powerful. When Samuel anointed Saul to be the king, Samuel spoke to him and said, The donkeys have been found. Don't sweat them. That's over but I have an assignment for you from God. And when the season is over for this unemployment, God has an assignment for you, has a destiny, has a purpose, has an anointing for you in your new position, in your new job, in your new situation. And God wants to encourage you that He is organizing your steps. He's leading you. He's guiding you moment by moment, day by day, people by people. God is leading and guiding you to the provision He has for your job and for His kingdom.